it. I think it looks so sleek. So we got rid of the machine. One of the most asked questions of any van or bus lifer is, how do you land? How do you shower? And the answer is, we don't. Open the door, Joe Schmell. Back in 2019, we spent the year building out our schoolie. After the build was done, we sold our house and traveled for a full year. Following that year of travel, we started to crave building again and getting something 4x4. Four four. Alright, we're switching things up on you again, and I know you were excited for us to get the outside done, to get something done, to get the engine running. Well, after an extended discussion yesterday, we both decided that you don't need the outside to be done for the inside, but you do need the inside done for the outside, so we're back on the inside. So we're at the part of adding wood, but to add the wood with the metal has been a bit challenging to figure out, but we think we just found out a solution. I don't want to speak too soon. I'll show you what we were talking about once we actually do figure it out. Let me apologize for the fan, but everybody, it's almost 90 already and it's morning time, so give us a break. So this is how I think we are going to do this. So this is, as you can see, the metal framing and then the wood on the inside. Now, originally when I was doing this metal framing, I was going to put the wood on the outside but then I started thinking that we're gonna be wasting with like wasting room one of the most unique things about this build is the metal framing so why not play with our strong suits here and everything's gonna have this cool border to it so basically we are gonna do this style throughout the entire van on the inside and then the nice thing about doing this is we can eventually build everything in here and pull it all out and paint it with a spray gun so that way it's a perfect consistent paint and then put it all back in like it'll come together like that a glint okay so the goal is to get this entire stove section completely done <laughs> So we'll see how that goes. We just went to a hardwood store, picked up hickory for the cabinet facing and for some of the drawer facings. And then we picked up walnut for our countertop. So this will kind of all sit together like butcher block, but really thick butcher block. And it should be enough for both sides of the countertop. And then we'll have to go get more for our table section that we're doing later. Remember how See that little blades? Mm-hmm. Spins and it nicks off so much, ever. just ever so much. But what we wanna do is we wanna set this joint so that way it pulls off less because it seems like this joint almost snicks off too much. So what's happening is these blades go around and they nick off the material. See how it's hitting that? Mm -hmm. So they take off that material so then it's at this height. While we do this, it basically flattens one side so if it's like a little chirpy, we get a perfectly flat side, then we can take it to the table saw and have a perfect flat side to run against the fence. So from factory, this is already ran through a joiner on one side. So you can see this is like a rough saw side and then a jointed side, but we're not gonna trust it because it might have over time warped a little bit or they might have done a bad job. So basically we're gonna set this down here, this, and then just run it through. We were, I think I've already said this before, but we were gonna put all this wood on the outside of the metal and then looking further into it, we decided to go on the inside and I love it. I think it looks so sleek how it's very, uh, like it's bordered. Graphite on there. 
so that way I can see what I'm doing. So we don't have a planer and the local shop's planer isn't wide enough for this. And now what we could have done is like glued up two boards and then three boards and ran it through the planer and then glued the two together and then just done one surface. That would have been a, probably a smarter way to do this. But instead I have this little teeny hand planer and I'm going through and kind of, oh, not like that and just running it up like that. And so I put that pencil on there so I can see the highs and lows. And so I'm kind of literally just going down the whole line like a, a machine planer, except I'm just doing it by hand. And we're trying to get it down because over here you can see how there's highs and lows. These boards were warped and we weren't able to do, to get the warpage out. So we're just, we're taking that material down. I'm working, trying to work on the front door panels today. Lance gave me the task. I will do my best to do it and he'll probably assist where he needs assistance. We're gonna take off, so this bottom part of the door is gonna be totally different and then we're gonna reuse this top part. So we're gonna separate it and then create this bottom piece and see how that goes. worked out pretty okay. All right, I think I'm gonna just do one side first to make sure that that actually works out. So I'm just gonna take the square measurement of this and then trace it down. So I went ahead and made a template of the part we need to cut out. And then I measured and made a mark here. So we need to go 17 and a half from here down. So I set my template there, just like beautiful. I have this little straight edge. Okay, you know what, I actually decided I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna just use the table saw because then I can get it perfectly level. So we have a perfect cut now and I have to use a skill saw. That's so nice. I'm so happy we're milling down our own wood. Because mm -hmm. you could buy these strips from Home Depot, but like, they're just so fancy. So this is pretty cool. Lance told me. Um, I want to paint the back of this. It's going to be like a dark brown espresso, but we want to keep these the natural color and just stain them clear gloss or maybe give them a bit of a stain. But wood glue won't stick to paint as well as actual wood. So he actually just cut down this whole roll of tape down to one inch. So I'm just going to tape out all the places that aren't going to be painted, which are going to have these, and then I can touch it up in the future. I'm going to have a physical fight with the fly suit. Making sure that this centerpiece is nice and straight because then I can measure off of this one. And I'm gonna do that. There's no really corners that are actually corners. So I took this straight edge to this, which is actually off of a straight edge, but it curves in. And then I'm taking the square measurement off of that. This will make this project a lot easier. We're gonna just glue it, but some of them were kind of sticking up a bit, so might as well use this, and I'm sure we'll use it on the way on a lot of it.
morning, bud. Good morning, princess. All right, here's what we have going on. So yesterday, if you saw, I taped off and I had measured out where all the browns are gonna be, but it went off. And it probably went off because I was a bit off A, measuring, but B, we ended up just using this half inch jig, well, wood piece, but it's basically a jig instead, to gap these so that way they're for sure perfect and it's not just based on my measurements. But now I need to actually go in and just hand paint all of those cracks, which is okay. I know, ugh, stupid freaking flies. It's just a light game here where they don't land on your butt. That's what they like it, they like their butt. So you go from the other side, but you set it where the bearing rides on that, and then it just. Do you want to do it for me and show me? Four twenty plays and plays. Yeah, this bit is toast. It's just too dull. Yeah. There's a screw we're gonna need to add in the bottom on that, and then we're gonna need to figure out a clipping system. Okay. But we can just transfer off that door. That looks sweet. Happy with that. What we were talking about is these corners kind of slope up, and then this transition looked a little weird, so we're just gonna fix both of those problems by putting a strip of wood across once we mount it. We'll just put a piece of wood and attach that piece of wood just to the other wood. So that way this top and bottom are two separate components. I'm waiting for that piece to dry up on a piece that actually broke off. So while we're doing that, I'll get started on the other side. Everything is mounted now. It's not just sitting in there like I showed you last time. And I'll show you how I mounted them. So I make these little tabs all the way through. And that is what is holding everything in. Nice and sturdy. We will put glue around the beat, the edges whenever we paint them and actually put them in. The glue around the edges is one, to hold them in place even better. And two, which is my main reason, is to keep the squeak down because wood and metal together kind of end up squeaking here and there. So we're gonna try to put glue around every touching surface to keep that squeak down. But besides that, we're gonna start mounting the stove in because that's like the only welding part. Actually, I have one other welding part I need to do. Um, and then we'll start on putting the stove in. Uh, what I also did is I know I, this is like a broken record here, but I went through and worked on this back bumper again and got it lined up nice. So this back bumper, I had the strap holding the door open. But as you can see now, these boxes sit very, very nice to that rear tire before they kind of slanted down. So what I ended up doing is cutting the back of this here, cutting all these welds off, and then tilting it back and welding it all back up. I think when I added that plate there, the heat warped this bend and pulled the bend out a little bit, but now it's how I want. So this back area is pretty much done. Of course, I'll have to go back through and clean it up before paint. Our beautiful Allie, she's working on the doors. Um, and it's looking good. Let's see what she's doing. So yeah, this ended up turning out like poopoos. Um, I you can see the paint. That's the only thing that turned out like yeah. poop. So I actually just tried to paint match because this was like spray paint and then I was just trying to paint with the spray paint and I just think that the gloss of it just got out of whack. So I just got actual paint for that. So I'm gonna fill those gaps. And then this is the other door panel. So I'm just gonna trim this down and get both of these pretty much the same. So that way while I'm painting. Oh, I should have had you pick up a flush trim bit while you're out. You should have also had me pick up a ah, spray. That tough. corner. What corner? What corner? Lance just made you this super cool tool. I went in and just like hand painted each one of these cracks. And it ended up just working the best with like actual paint rather than spray paint. But 
I wasn't perfect, so there's paint on some of the inside of these panels. And so he cut this down as like a jig with sandpaper on the sides. That way I won't be sanding any of the paint um, and I'm only touching the sides, which is perfect. Since it's exposed, we might as well do it. I use the old like factory sound deadening on the door, put on the back of the panel, and maybe it'll help. That looks sweet. Babe, this is makes our van a game changer. this guy so we took out the guts and basically just made a nice wood one that'll sit in there and then we'll put a nice little wood door on it and we have a fancy pretty little shower kit coming to a store near you time for the panel Here's the tray for our little mini oven and stove. It's really cool. But Lance got sidetracked and started working on the outdoor shower. Tight fit city. Dang, that was the first try. One of the most asked questions of any van or bus lifer is, Allie and Lance, how do you shower? And the answer is, we don't. And when we do, which we never do, we just installed our shower. So we'll have to have a hook or make a hook for this. And then the idea is we'd have a curtain maybe tucked in the door here or next to the propane tank that'll sit over here, something like that. And I think the curtain will be long enough where uh, is like a full circle here. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably just have it on magnets so it can like magnet here. So that way we don't get any water on the inside. And then that way you can shower outside. Yeah! Right now it's kind of yucky looking because this is just glue on here. This is my school project uh, for the science fair. It's how to stay clean and use natural gases. So then the propane tank, get the propane tank. Mm. So the propane tank just slippery slides right in. And the reason I box this in is I'll actually take like some silicone and we have some uh, like flex seal and we'll paint it in there. So that way if it's like airtight, so if this leaks at all, it's contained. That's the idea with the box. So that way we don't inhale any propane. And then I also have a bum eye today. That's the price you pay sleeping with Allie. Stop, enough. It's so crazy that you always get bum eyes, but I never do it. It seems like it's yeah, a you issue. I get it from you. No, but then I would get it. Open the door, Joe Schmo. Boom. And it's perfect because our propane is just going to connect to the stove back there. Does our water heater run off of propane? Or Yeah. Okay, perfect. So then our water here is going to be right next to that. And then all the propane is just in this one area. And then there's going to be a door actually covering those components. Right. That way you don't have to see it every time you open the door. So the front doors are still not completely finished, but I'm going to move on to these back ones because I don't really know how to finish them very well. And 
that might need some of Lance's help and I don't want to take up his whole time today. So I'm going to do this door. We're completely covering it other than the handle. And then the door over here actually has a storage spot that we're going to build a storage box for. So we'll just do this one for today. A silly cut. Let me reenact it. I was cutting something and holding it like this and cutting upside down and I was right on the edge and for some reason I was cutting like this I guess. I was holding it my pointy finger out and it slipped off and then went and it cut fast. Luckily my finger's still on here. I didn't get any stitches sure I could have but the bleeding stopped and we cleaned it out real good and I think we're time to get back to work High five. it's time to get back to work So I made a little guide for a router, so that way I can route out the inside of this. So I took a straight edge and did the perimeter, and then now I can just go in here and go crazy. But if this was just this size, whenever I route it out and I get like halfway out here, it'll start wanting to tip down. And that's gonna be inset for our stove. Right, so our stove burners sit underneath this. made a second one that was bigger of that big thing the template and as you can see that's how it looks i messed up a little here with the little one because it was like spongy so that's why i made a bigger one and then did the whole thing turned out really good i think ow <laughs> it's so fun. Every um, because this sticks up quite a bit so this here can now clearance it so you can see like right there it wouldn't clearance it and now it clearances it clarence clarence i wanted to give you guys a full like start to finish video on both of these projects but i have no idea when they're going to be finished and in between this entire project that lance has been doing and kind of what i've been doing lance has also been working on getting the engine started and we're going to do a full start to finish getting the engine started video so that might not be up for a little while as right. of now i'm also tired of mechanic work so i keep hopping back and forth and you have to stop mechanic work because we're waiting on a new part to fix some of the past parts. But we do know certain things are going wrong, which is a good thing that way. It's not days and days of diagnosing. So we're slowly fixing those things that are going wrong. Yep. The good part is we're actually finally building out the inside, which is super exciting. So if you want to watch that process, if you're excited to see how it's turning out, especially after watching this video, there's only better to come. It's only going to get better. So make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you on the next one.